10,000 lakes, or they've told me locally, more than 10,000 lakes. Some believe even 20,000. Beautiful place to come in the summertime, at least, when Moto America arrives here at Brainerd International Raceway. We are ready for the Revit Twins Cup class. Jason Wygant joined by the champ, Roger Hayden, to give you the call. And Pitt Road reporting will be handled by Greg Kramer. It's really exciting, this Twins Cup class. The racing is usually close every week. And the point standings have closed up quite a bit as well. Jody Berry was dominating as far as the standings were concerned earlier in the year. He's had a couple of bad races in a row. And now Anthony Maziato has closed it down to just a four-point lead. But that doesn't really give you an idea of how many contenders that there are. So many other riders have had bad luck here and there. The points are not as tight as the racing on the track is. But there is Jody Berry now clinging to what was once a big points lead. Yeah, the last couple of races have definitely not gone his way. And then even this morning had an issue in qualifying, crashing in, uh, in turn three. So he could have qualified maybe even a little better, put himself in that second row. But he needs to get his season turned back around this weekend. And, uh, you know, I think he can do it. But he had a really big points lead. But headed into the ridge, things have just kind of come unraveled for him. Yeah, uh, had won four races in a row and then scored a 13, 13 points and then a zero uh, of the last two events. And meanwhile, Maziato had a podium and two wins in the last three races. In the meanwhile, Cody Ventura here, Corey Ventura here was your fast qualifier. So like I said, a lot of other riders have shown pace and it's a lot closer than the points indicate. And really this is a race that several riders can win. Ready here, Revit Twins Cup. The riders have surveyed the track. Also, a couple other riders to watch. Got the 49 of Hayden Schultz, who won the uh, early round in the series at Daytona and has come so close to so many wins since. There's your defending champ, Caleb DeCarroll, who's been one of the fastest, if not the fastest rider as of late, but at a uh, slow start to the season. Looks like we we're pushing the bike either John off no the grid or the back. Joe's no John Knowles. Oh, John Knowles. Must have been in the wrong spot. Now everybody gets one last chance to look at this track. Leo tr McDonald's bike didn't get going. Uh-oh. So we have more problems here. Man, that's so disappointing for him. He's had, having his best weekend so far, qualifying ninth inside the top ten on row three and then have that issue. Hopefully it'll, it'll start. But that is just struggled all year, been outside the top 15, comes here this weekend, qualifies really well, and then doesn't get to race. Trying the bump start here, but it is completely level. You don't have any bit of a downhill. That is really tough to do. Ah, oh, Liam McDonald, the pure attitude racing. Let's see if they can find any sort of incline to help fire that bike up. Give you the starting grid here, which hopefully will include Liam McDonald once we actually do go racing. As mentioned, Ventura, who's been rolling as of late, has pole. Caleb DeCarroll is fast. Hayden Schultz is a third quickest. James Raspoli is on the chart, but he's not going to be racing. No, I had to crash this morning in qualifying and hurt his wrist. Crash and turn one a really fast corner, so it's just glad to see just the, just the wrist for him. And then Barry, that time to get on road three came early because on the second lap of qualifying, he went down, and that was the end of his qualifying session. Trevor Standish, see there, 16th. Kyle Franz, 13th on the grid. And we'll give you some other riders here as we give you the full field here in the Revit Twins Cup Championship. There's Knowles on that 520. Had to get himself into the right spot. And so riders taking their last chance to inspect this track. And there is the full field. Seperano being champ and fast. 28 riders on the grid here in Minnesota. So we'll see how this championship goes. You've got Maziato on the 516. Closing in on the points on Barry, and then a lot of other riders that want to take a win, including this man who won our last race, Corey Ventura. And there's Hayden Schultz on the 49. He's led a lot of laps this year. He said he's getting awfully frustrated with the amount of wins that he could have had. Just got to play the chess game right. Doesn't think he's going to be able to break away. A lot of riders believe it's just going to be close all the way to the end. I think it is, too, and just trying to put yourself in that right place on the last lap with the draft, uh, you know, just trying to 
if the guys behind you are, are really battling and maybe if you're in front you can maybe get away through you know turns 10 and 11 and, and hold it on and there's Liam McDonald right there definitely not gonna make the start big bummer for him he looked good in qualifying so here we go folks Revit Twins Cup Ventura to Carroll Schultz that's your front row watch for the lights to go green And there we go, a big jump from Schultz in third. Is he going to be able to make the move? Schultz also, got a bad start. He fell back to fifth. Yeah, he actually jumped too hard, dumped that clutch, and lost position. It's actually Blake Davis who had the best start of the group, and he's going to go all the way to the lead on the 22. Maziato coming pretty quick, too. He's got himself up to third already. And there's McDonald taking the long ride back. Man, waiting all day for race time, and the bike hey, doesn't fire. Hayden Schultz to the lead, turn three. Wow, that was a quick comeback. So he lurched off the line and then quickly Davis back around him. And then Ventura is there as well. Maziato changes every time you look yep. at it. Caleb DeCarroll there fifth, Jody Berry right behind him. It's shuffling in a hurry right now, but it's Blake Davis on the 22 in the lead. Schultz right there. Look down the inside by Ventura from third. Looks like this top five guys are trying to make a little bit of a break. Jody Berry there in six. He does not want to lose touch with these guys early on. Well, that red 516, the rodeo racing machine of Maziato, that's exactly what he would like to happen. Break away from your points leader, Jody Berry. So this is a critical juncture for Berry. He's got to get back yeah. to that lead group, and he's doing it. Yeah, he made a little bit of time up there through the chicane, but he lost it on the exit. So I don't think maybe, maybe went in a little too quick and lost his drive. It looks like Blake Davis is going to lead the first lap. Oh, the 49 is Schultz giving it a look. There's Ventura using the wide line on corner entrance. See how it turns out once they go under this bridge. Ventura looking to make a move. No, Schultz holds him off. And will we see some drafting, you think, on this track? Is it is it fast enough in some of these sections? I think there, you'll see a little bit in the twins just because you can carry that momentum through turn one and two and get in that draft and possibly be able to, to, to use that draft in your favor. See how Schultz plays it. He's right in the middle of this three pack up front. No, oh, Davis goes wide. Let's see if Schultz can make a move down the inside. Gave it a look. Same did Ventura. No change in the running order. And there's Anthony Maziato right where he wants to be. On that 516, he is in fourth. And now they're pulling away just a little bit from yeah. DeCarroll. DeCarroll, this is his home race. This is where he grew up. So he's gonna wanna put on a, a good ride for his home fans. Yeah, Minnesota native. He now does his training down in Texas, so good excuse to come up here and visit people. Watch him out of there in fourth, looking good for points. Let's send it down to Greg Kramer. Well, you guys were talking about that. Anthony is right where he wants to be, not in the lead, sitting back there in third or fourth, and uh, just working on rhythm, trying to figure out strategy, where he could pull the pin and the like. He had a, a an amazing weekend here last year and felt both the, uh, the, uh, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat, but flipped it as uh, he obviously led that entire first race here up until the second to the last corner on the last lap, tried to defend going in into 12, got it wrong on the egg, it and uh, got passed by DeCarell, who had made up a five-second deficit to get there. The next day, when Anthony got to the front, he just drove away. He was not to be denied and got his first win there. And as so often happens, he's been right at the sharp end ever since. And uh, I think he likes this place. I think he knows how to race it. So he's definitely going to be somebody that's going to be right in the fight. Also, I think it, too, gives the guy some confidence coming into this weekend. Whenever you had such a good year there, the previous almost went in both races. He had to be coming in. And this weekend, got himself back in the points, only four behind, and to a track that he likes. And Schultz down to the inside. Can he hold it? He now has the lead on that Vance and Hines, number 49 Yamaha. Now, the key thing to look at, it's three Yamahas up front and then two Aprilias as almost had a position change between those two, between those two Aprilias. To Carroll gave it a look. Anyway, Maziato, he believes he's going to have to do some drafting. The Yamahas have some horsepower, he feels, on this track. And he feels like he needs to draft to stay with him on the faster sections. But he just got zapped. DeCarroll got it. Yeah, DeCarroll definitely has his head down now from when he lost that group a little bit. He's looking pretty pretty aggressive now. I think he can see Hayden Schultz in the lead. And Hayden has showed incredible pace all weekend. And I think some of these guys are afraid he might try to make a break. And every weekend we talk about the different qualifying strategy for Schultz 
does not use different tires in qualifying, would rather qualify on old tires so they know exactly how the bike is going to perform when the tires go away. They're just chasing race setup all weekend. Yeah, this is dangerous to get about front like this. He says he doesn't think he could break away, but certainly he would like to. And right now it's up to Corey Ventura to keep him in sight. Ventura, they've been chasing bike setup all year. Working with Melissa Paris. Oh, he gets side by side trying to use the draft to get the lead almost. Schultz holds him off, and here comes Davis around the outside. So they've been chasing a lot of different things, even with uh, Ventura's bike. They even tried a new frame just to see, same spec, but just to see maybe there was something off with the frame. They've been chasing stability in the motorcycle. Obviously got better at our last race because he won it. Seems to be on a roll right now, but just lost the number two spot to Davis. And you can see the, these guys battling the way they are. Jody Berry is kind of creeping back in. You can now see him in the back of the picture. They keep going, changing positions every corner. It's going to let him catch up. Davis has gone from third to first, just made the move on Schultz. So I think we got to settle in and expect lots of passing for the lead throughout this one. No breakaways. Five rider pack. Can Berry back there in sixth close in? Then you got Cody Wyman. Our points leader in the Junior Cup Division, running seventh here in Twins Cup. Donahue, Heniel, Neubauer, that is your top ten. Well, wait, Blake Davis is going to try to make a breakaway. Yeah, Blake, starting at Laguna, Blake has looked really good after winning that first race at Daytona. No, he has a lot of talent, kind of mid-season, kind of struggled a little bit. But going into Laguna, things have changed for him, and he's been one of the guys to beat. Yeah, Davis and Ventura have really stepped up their game as of late. And lo and behold, they find themselves first and second. And forget the breakaway from Davis. Ventura's right back on the back tire. Oh, as soon as we mentioned somebody makes a break, next corner that the person is right there. But it looks like these two are now going to try to make a break and see what they can do. Okay, working together. And then it's Schultz, Maziato, and DeCarroll. Will they work together? to build that gap, or is Ventura gonna try to take the lead again? Great stuff from Revit, Twins Cup. Maziato with a stab down to the inside on Schultz, takes over third. Good pass for Anthony. He really set that up early out of turn two, trying to get that good drive. And look at Jody Berry still just getting a little closer each lap. As far as the points are concerned, it's Maziato he could be the points leader, depending on how far forward he can go if Barry ends up still back there in sixth place. But yes, Barry is creeping back into the picture. Maziato, he has decided it's time for him to go, making passes, and he has caught the leaders. It could be a really good points day for Anthony Maziato if he wins and Jody Barry gets sixth. He's in position maybe to do it. He's got first and second right in front of him. And he's looking to make a pass on Ventura. Maziato, something has clicked for him. The beginning of lap four, now lap five. And he is rolling on that Rodeo Warhorse Racing Aprilia. The two Yamahas up front battling. Ventura showing a wheel. Blake Davis able to hold him back. Another shot at it from Maziato. And you see Jody Berry getting a little bit closer back there in sixth. They've got a big gap over Wyman, who would be next in seventh. And Anthony Maziato, first rider to get into 36. Is, that's, a, that's a race le record last year. Caleb DeCarroll's best lap was at 37-1. Well, that was Greg's report. When will Maziato decide to pull the pin? Definitely lap five. He has found something. Fastest rider on track. It's a third place bike on your screen right now. Can he go all the way to the lead? Davis and Ventura try to say no. As far as Ventura's situation, still figuring out some of the data on this new Yamaha R7. This bike came out at this time last year. It actually made its race debut in Moto America with Schultz on that 49 at this track in 2021. A lot of riders on it for the first time here at the beginning of 22. Ventura's made some strides as of late. Right on Davis in the lead. Oh, no, then Venturi, a big mistake. I think it's Blake that makes oh, a big no, mistake. Right. Blake gets into turn eight way too deep and runs wide. Okay, so he opened up the gap only because he came in too hot. Then he ran wide. Advantage Ventura. How how easy is that to do, to get that wrong like uh, Davis did? It, it, 
Well, you're going in there so fast, that yeah. left hander so quick, and when you get the lead, you don't really have anything to, to judge it off of. So Davis comes in too hot. Ventura now to the number one spot. Can he break away over the halfway mark? Six laps down, six to go. There's Mazzioto's pit board. Hayden Schultz is kind of losing touch to the group. Surprised to see that. It's a rider who's led a lot of laps this year. Blake back to the front using that draft. Blake's a little guy too, so the draft, that's really gonna help him on, on these long straights because he's gonna be able to tuck in pretty good. What a race here, it's what we come to expect in Twins Cup. So back and forth we go. Davis makes a mistake, gives up the lead, gets it right back. Now Ventura's taking a shot at him. Caleb DeCarroll last lap got himself in the 36s too. So two riders have logged laps in the 36s. That is Maziato and DeCarroll, the two Aprilias. And there Perry Yamaha's right in front of them. Davis and Ventura slugging it out. Now this next section is where Blake made the mistake last lap, but now he's gonna be behind Corey. He got in this left, but when he went to the right, he got in a little bit too deep last lap and went really wide. And right, there's Maziato's team. Well, how about this? He's showing oh. a wheel on the inside and gets the pass. Another Is that another mistake actually there by Davis? No, I think it was just, Anthony had more speed through there. It looked like Blake was right on line and Anthony was just aggressive through there. Okay, just held it tight. So Maziato now up to second. When I went and visited him and his team earlier, they said, man, the Yamahas are so fast on this track. We would just like to get points. But Maziato himself looked at me and said, I'm going for P1. And he is right now up to second. Maziato with Corey Ventura in his sights. And now it's a three rider breakaway. You mentioned that Schultz has lost time to Carroll. Getting dangerously far back there. Maziato gave it a look for the lead. Blake's side bike side. is definitely quick going from third to first. And Maziato's into the lead. Now we'll see what Anthony can do. I bet now he's going to put his head down because he knows Blake can draft past him if it's the last lap. Okay, so now the high-speed chess match begins. They've all taken the measure of each other. They know their strong points, their weak points. Maziato, he is going to put in a sprint. I'm trying to break that draft. And Davis and Ventura are right back to him. This is where Blake has struggled the last couple laps here in turn eight. He's a little bit wide again. Yep. Corey got struck, got sucked in a little deep too, but they really didn't lose much time. Blake sets up really wide for that chicane and kind of leaves the, the indoor, the inside open where Anthony passed him the lap before. Jody Berry's got yeah. past Hayden Schultz. Wow, so I'm not sure what has gone wrong here for uh, Schultz, but he was battling for the lead, had the lead at one point, and has lost a bunch of ground, and he's all the way back to sixth place. Maziato trying to get away from Davis and Ventura. And Maziato had a heck of a run Ooh. going, two wins in a row, then a late crash at uh, Laguna cost him a ton of points. Davis back to the lead. On the outside through turn one. Uh, you said earlier, is that still counting this class, turn one? Just who's got the guts? <laughs> yeah. Who's got the guts to hold it on? And right now it's clearly Blake Davis. Is it just the speed that makes that one so scary? It's coming yeah, out Yeah, just because it's so fast. Yep. I mean, it's really fast. And you're so close to each other as well. Davis puts a few bike lengths between himself and the field. Maziotto quickly eats that back up. It might be down to three riders. Davis, Maziato, and Ventura. Caleb DeCarroll on the outside looking in and fourth. Maziato going back to third. Ventura making the move. I'll tell you what, Ventura's like a completely different rider over the last couple of races uh, than where he was. This is the form that we're used to seeing. He came in last year, Blake's a little bit wide again there in eight. See how Blake sets up a little bit wide? It kind of opens the door there on the yeah. inside on the last lap. Somebody's going to sneak in there. But Corey, when he came to this class last year, he was a guy that was winning and, or close to winning every weekend and giving himself a chance this season. I think we expected him to be more like we've seen him the last two races all year. 
Yeah, won our last race, but uh, is still only seventh in points because of the slow start to the season. Would love to get two in a row, but he's got to hold off Masiato and make the move on Davis. Pretty impressed with Blake's race pace being so consistent. Best lap 37-1, last lap 37 Four, just consistently doing those low 37s, leading at the front is, ho is hard to do. Ventura gives it a look, not enough to get the lead. Maziato has closed right back to them, and they've got about a half of a second on Caleb DeCarroll. And through this left-hander, Davis able to hold it tight into the right. Maziato, as the pass attempt from Ventura slowed him up a little bit. Maziato is now trying to get in there, almost three wide. See how Davis handles it this time. Still wide. out wide. Really wide. Every lap, he's wide in that turn. Now it's getting close. The last lap, he's going to have to close that off or somebody's going to make the pass. Yeah, absolutely. He got past once earlier in the race there and has been wide every other trip through. Now hard on the brakes in the 12. And here comes turn one. The Carroll's definitely lost touch these these three leaders. It's coming down to these three guys. Ultra high speed section here into two. Yeah, three rider race now. They've broken away from the rest of the field. Davis, Ventura, Maziato. Ventura to the front. Didn't need Davis to go wide in that other corner and Davis quickly fights back, takes a stab at it. I think you're gonna see Corey really try to blitz this infield section, see if he can't break that draft from the, the front straightaway. Because if, they, if they're where they are right now, headed out of the last corner, Blake Davis will draft by him for sure. Here is six, but you gotta watch that carousel corner. How will Davis play it now that he's back to second? Can he's he... in there quick again. And going wide again. He held it that time, not as wide. Yeah, that's about half as wide as it had been. See, Maziato still looking at it. Now to turn nine. Lap traffic in front of him as well, too. Oh, first time we've seen that in this race. So these three, it's down to them. Two to go. There's the traffic. Oh, Ventura. Oh, it was touchy in Davis. Oh, now Blake gets held up. Masiato able to get through. Another rider goes a lap down. Ventura able to make that move. And it ends up right where, back where it was, except Masiato is the one that lost ground. But yeah. the lead two, right back where they were. But I think that gap that uh, Corey was able to get with that lapper kept uh, Blake far enough back where he wasn't close enough to make this draft pass. And he's going to block on the inside. Corey's not going to leave that inside open, I wouldn't think. Oh, he does oh, down he does. The, in the corner. Davis hard under the brakes. Yeah, he did leave it wide, and Davis, great job holding it. So Blake Davis back to the lead. Where I've seen Corey make a lot of passes in this, this race so far is turn six. He's been pretty aggressive through there, pretty quick through here. This is, there's four into five. Coming out of here, he sets himself up really good in this next left-hander. I've seen him make a lot of passes into here, and I think he's, he wanted to. And don't forget that carousel, turn eight, where Davis has been wide almost every lap. And we're headed to that section. Can the 22 hold the lead? Here it is. Got to get to that inside. He goes Blake's wide, wide again. Blake's way wide. Here it is, Ventura to the inside, side by side, on the final lap for the lead. And Ventura does it. Davis has yep. been wide every time. Opens the door there, especially in the last lap. You've got to close that off. And running out of real estate to try to get it back. Masiato has reeled the leaders back in. Three riders still fighting for it in the final lap. Masiato giving a real look down the inside from third. Not enough. Ventura looking for two in a row in Revit Twins Cup. 
Nice, got it. Here's the run to the checkers. Corey Ventura does it again. Well, Blake Davis ran a spectacular race, but he is going to rue the day that he went wide there in turn eight. That carousel, he just couldn't get it. When he goes back and watches this race tonight, I can promise you he's not going to make this mistake tomorrow. We got two riders down, one of them being Leo McDonald. No, Standish, right? Standish, sorry, yeah, yeah, Standish, his teammate. sorry. I knew it was a pure attitude bike. That's it was right. Standish. Uh, McDonald, the bike didn't start. Yeah, his teammate uh, Standish is down. I did not see the number on the other bike. And Maziato is still celebrating even the podium performance points-wise with Jody Barry, your series leader on the 11, finishing up in fifth. It's going to be almost a dead heat. It's going to be close. Yep. I mean, that was already about four as points. close as you could get with yep. four points. What a battle. Ventura, Maziato, and Davis really went at it. And you have to wonder, since Ventura saw Davis go wide that many times, did he just know, wait till then? No, I'm not sure if he if he knew, you know, I think because he was so wide on the, the entry that he put himself there. And then when Blake opened up the door, he was already there. The red flag is for that crash that we saw with Standish and Andrew Cruz, who were down on the very last lap. So that's what the red flag is for. Hope they're okay. So we always say there's battles for positions, not just the battle for the lead. And apparently these two had an incident right at the end. Their Standish machine. And they're going to stand it up, up against the fence. Again, we hope these riders are all right. Bummer to see that. Oh, okay. Looks like uh, Andrew Cruz is back up on the 898. Let's give you the highlights. Revit Twins Cup. Into the lead quickly is Blake Davis. Not a great green position, but a great start. You had the 49 of Hayden Schultz up there early. Yeah, Hayden didn't get a good start, but he worked himself up there pretty quick. And you see Blake headed toward the front. And then from here, Hayden just started losing a couple spots here and there, which tried to stay with them and take the lead, but he just couldn't stay up there for the whole race. No, it was at first. Schultz against Ventura and Davis, but then he started losing ground, as you mentioned. Here's Davis to take the lead. Keep watching that red machine of Maziato. About four or five laps in, things started coming together for him. Here he gets around, Schultz pushes him back and forth, and it would break down to these three. Yeah, toward the end, and you could see where Blake was kind of opening up that chicane there at turn eight, and some guys were, were making the pass, but you could see at this point in the race, Caleb was still there, it was still four rider battle. Anthony Maziato makes the move there in the second. Asiato here taking a lunge for the lead and gets it over Davis. And now they've broken to Carroll, and now it's down to only these three. Every time they got Davis, he could fight back. He could fight back, really use that draft to his advantage. And you can see this last lap toward the end of the race, Corey Mature knew where he wanted to be. And that's on the inside. It's still not over yet from here. As they just kept swapping it back and forth, these three. Fantastic racing. Davis and Ventura side by side again. Opposite lines where they were earlier. But Davis kept going too wide here. Yeah. See, even he stood up a little bit and he just opened the door for him even more. It should have just stayed right at the bottom. And that was a decisive pass. Last lap move. And that puts a 28 of Ventura into victory lane for the second race in a row. And there's Melissa Paris. Hey, she was hoping, not guaranteeing, that the confidence from Laguna Seca would carry over. It has. He has won back to back. <laughs> Always happens on the last lap. He said Davis ends up in the number two spot. Maziato third. He was still wheeling and celebrating that podium. It's going to help him in points. The Veloce racing teammates of DeCarroll and Barry next. Hayden Schultz. Wonder what happened to him there. Looked like he could have been a race winner. Ends up going back to six. Cody Wyman on the wrench racing. Yamaha is seventh. Donahoe and Henel. That is top nine. Moto America Twins Cup. Ventura's margin of victory there, by the way, is uh, 0.3 over Davis. That's how close it was. And with that last lap pass, no breakaways possible in that class. No doubt about that. They were close all the way to the end. So that's your top nine. We have the podium ready to go. Let's send it down to Greg Kramer. 
Thanks very much, guys, and what a race. It's what we seem to see here in the Revit Twins Cup. And uh, chatting a little bit earlier with Corey, obviously at the end of qualifying, we talked about the win at, uh, at Laguna, the momentum. Then you put it up on pole, and we said this is the place to start if you want to uh, get another win and, and uh, keep making progress in those points. Man, you nailed it. Yeah, you know, uh, my first laps on this uh, track, I was like, it's going to be a good weekend here. Uh, yeah, uh, Melly has done such an amazing job giving me the best bike on the grid. Man, it almost feels like I'm cheating out there. <laughs> no, it's, it's great, and I'm having so much fun out there. Uh, I got to give a huge shout out to my whole MP13 crew. Uh, my mom flew out here for this race. It's awesome to have her here. Uh, oh, man, there's so many people that go into this. I'm just happy to be on a Yamaha. Well, the family obviously makes it really, really special here, obviously. Congratulations and uh, keeping that mo alive. Yes, sir. We're going to go on to the next one and keep moving forward. All right. There he is, your winner. And uh, what a race he put in, certainly. That's right. And, and we're going to wander on over to our second place finisher, and it is the number 22 of Blake Davis on the N2 Racing Bobblehead Moto Yamaha. And, man, you were in a scrap today. Uh, up front, back in the, you know, drifting back a little bit. It was just a fascinating race. It's a chess match, isn't it? Yeah, I liked it. I led most of the race, and that's the best I've ever done in a race, really. And so that was amazing. Unfortunately, couldn't get it slowed down going into turn eight and kept going wide there. Gave Corey the lead on the last lap but uh, tried to help him off. He rode a great race, and I'd like to thank uh, Into Racing, Bobblehead Moto, Showy, uh, Dainese, and uh, just all my friends and family. So. Got a lot of support, obviously. Well done, congratulations, and nice podium. Thank you. Yeah, make some noise. Great job by Blake Davis. Now we're going to wander over to our third place finisher and uh, Anthony Maziato uh, riding, of course, the rodeo racing warhorse Aprilia. Uh, again, you know, uh, you had, we've talked about it all weekend long. Last year here, that first race, you had almost did it and then had the other uh, problem here in 12. Came back with great redemption and now another podium here. You like this place, don't you? Yeah, it feels being good here. Uh, Minnesota it was the last time I was here last year uh, for the first time, actually, and I really enjoyed the track. It's pretty bumpy, but it's what I'm used to. We do a lot of bumpy stuff out in Northeast, get a lot of snow. So, uh, But I can't thank my whole crew enough, Rodeo Racing, Warhorse, HSPK, NJ Mini GP, AGV, uh, Dainese, Geoscape, Luxstar, uh, Solar Construction, all the boys that helped me out. Mama and Papu, they're always here supporting us. So. Uh, I mean, we were down a tiny bit of mile an hour, but uh, we're going to take home and do some work, and we'll be back to get them next time. Well, you were ob obviously able to get to the front on, on a couple of occasions here, uh, still on the podium. But like you said, you got another uh, you know, shot at it uh, before the next race. Uh, so uh, uh, looking forward to more from you. And with that podium, and obviously with the guys leading the point struggling a little bit this weekend, you're right there. Yeah, I'm not sure how the points settle out, but uh, we're just keeping the pressure on them and keep doing good, getting good results. And uh, yeah, there's really nothing else I can do. Well, you're doing everything you can, man. Well done. Thank you. How about it? A podium here for this guy. Guys, uh, just amazing races we always see from the Revit Twins. No doubt about it, Greg. That was close. And talking to Maziano and his team before the race, they knew those Yamahas would have the mile per hour and be fast. I think he's more than happy to be up on the podium and make up more ground on another approach.